Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1087. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1086 to 1088, click on the link below the video. Hey, in this video, we want to talk about some numbers in this column that do not fall between 3.5, the lower hurdle, and the upper hurdle 8.2. So 9.7 is not within these upper and lower values. So we need to, in this column, have a warning that says outside range. And then we want to do conditional formatting. All right, so first we're going to talk about the if formula. Now check this out. There's two bits of information. Each number in this column here has to be checked against both lower and upper. So this number, we need to ask the question. And we might look down here just because the 9.7 is outside the range. But we have to ask two questions. Are you, number in the cell, less than the lower hurdle? Or are you, number in the cell, greater than the hurdle? If it's exactly 3.5 or 8.2, we it's within that range. So we will not use an equal sign. All right, we're going to start by just looking at the OR function. And then we'll put the OR function inside the IF and give our warning, which is outside range. We need the two words outside range. So you ready? Equals OR. Now, OR can have many logical tests. We're going to have two. One, two. Each is uh, some logical test that comes out to be true or false. In order for the OR to deliver a true to the cell, just one of these will have to come out to be true. One will be true, one will be false. Because the number can't be both below the lower hurdle and above. All right, so we're going to ask relative cell references. Reference, are you less than the hurdle? And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that. So as we copy down, it's locked down on the 3.5. That's the first logical test. Notice right now it'll come out false. Our second logical test is, hey, relative cell reference, are you greater than this 8.2? And I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it. In this case, this number will come out false. But So because there's two falses, a false will be delivered to the cell. Only when the OR gets one true will it deliver a true to the cell. Control Enter, double click and send it down. So here, it got the true on the upper end. And here, it got the true from the lower end. We could even come here and run Formula Evaluator to see how this works. We go up to Formula, Formula, Evaluate Formula there. Or we can use the keyboard shortcut Alt MV. Now we can watch. We can either click Evaluate or Enter. Enter, Enter. It gets a true. The other one will be a false. So OR only has to get one true in order for it to deliver a true to the cell. Now that's not what we want. But notice we have our trues and falses. That'll be the trigger to deliver the text string outside range. All right, so watch this IF function after the equal sign but before the or, and there's a logical test. The or, remember, what does it do? It delivers true or false. So that's all it's going to do. It's going to deliver a true or false to logical test. So I very carefully come to the end, comma. Now it wants to know, what do we put in the cell if it's true in double quotes? And looks like I spelled it right, but spell check. If you spell it wrong here and hit Enter, spell check won't find it. So you've got to make sure that it's spelled correctly while it's in edit mode. All right, so that's the value of true. But what do we want to see in the cell comma if it's false? I'm just going to put a double quote, double quote. Now that's a null text string. It is a thing. It's text, but it'll show nothing. It's actually a text string with zero length, whereas this would be however many characters are there plus the space. All right, so there's our two things. Control Enter. The if function, when I double click and send this down, we'll put one of two things in each one of these cells. Whenever it found a false, it put a null text string. Whenever it found a true, it put outside range all the way down. Now we want to do conditional formatting. And I want to look at three situations. One is maybe we want just the numbers to have conditional formatting. Like any time that number is outside this range, it should be yellow. Then we want to see how to do the same thing for just the words. And we'll actually use these two columns over here. And then we'll see how to highlight the entire row. 
So I'm going to start here. And we're going to use built-in conditional formatting, home, conditional formatting, drop down, highlight cell rules. I don't see any not between greater than, less than between. I want not between, no problem, more rules, cell value. And we'll use our drop down and say not between. And then I simply can highlight. Anytime you see a text box with a collapse button, it means you can go get the information from the cells. So I'm going to click on but not between that and not between that. Now notice they're using the word and here, but it's really an or criteria situation. Sometimes English language is loose that way. Now we come down to format, and we'll say something like uh, yellow. Whatever format you want, click OK, click OK. So there we have it. If we were to change this to 6, all right, so then that all goes away, Control Z. Now what about uh, if we wanted just the words? Well, now we can ask, is each cell, does it contain outside the range? So I highlight, home, conditional formatting, highlight cell rules, and this should be equal to equal to ah I don't I haven't typed it anywhere over here which I could have but since this isn't going to change it's always outside range I'm just going to type it in so anytime it's outside range and I have control I can put whatever formatting by selecting custom formatting and then whatever it is you want click OK click OK so there we go if I were to change this to 2 Boop, instantly it highlights Control Z. Now those were built in. If we're going to use conditional formatting to highlight the whole row here, we're going to have to use formulas. And we're going to have to use our OR function right here. The only difference is the B3s are going to have to each cell, date, reading, and then this warning, are going to have to look at B3. So I'm going to have to do something tricky here. I'm going to copy this so I don't have to type it over again. And watch this. Over in the cells, off to the side, I'm going to highlight a cell, hit F2 and Control V. I forgot my equal sign. Now I, I'm going to pretend that this J uh, cell right here, this is J3, is the date cell. Because we're going to have to highlight the entire table and then open up conditional formatting and put this formula. But this formula is going to simulate that cell. And then when we copy this side, it needs to move here and here. Now this formula is going to be in the dialog box, not in the cells. But check this out. That B3, I need to put my cursor there and hit the F4 key one, two, three times. See, the B needs to be locked. So when the formula is here, it gets copied over to the side, locked on the B. But when I copy it down, that 3, row 3, will move to the next date. And I'm going to have to do the same thing here, one, two, three times with the F4. Control Enter. Now watch this. We're going to copy it over to the side. These are in the cells, right? But we're just going to see how it will work behind the scenes in the dialog box. See the patterns of true? There it is. It's looking at the 9.9. It's looking at the 9.9. .9. It's looking at the 9.9. .9. But when I go down a cell, boom, the blue cell moves down because the row reference is not locked, but the column is. Now I'm going to highlight the upper or copy the upper left corner of this table right here. I'm going to copy it in Edit Mode, Control C, Escape. Now I'm going to highlight my little table. Home. Conditional formatting or new rule, or I can do Alt H L N arrow down, use a formula, tab, control V. There's that formula in the dialog box. See, that's beautiful. The dialog dialog box holds it, puts it in the cell, copied over and down in memory so that none of the actual data and formulas in our table gets interfered with. All right, formatting, something like uh, whatever you want. I'm going to do font. Click OK, and there we go. Anytime we change a number, instantly the whole row is highlighted. Same with our not between and our cell value. All right, we'll see you next trick.